So now we're going to spend a little bit of time specifying how branches actually work in the hardware. Uh, because it can be a little confusing, and I want to make sure that we all understand exactly what happens when you calculate a branch. Uh, jumps are an attempt to simply replace the contents of the program counter with some new unrelated address. Uh, and we have two ways to do that. A register jump, which means we just take the contents of a register, put it into the program counter, done. Or a uh, J-type jump, which is where we take the bottom 26 bits of the instruction register, pardon me, and use it to calculate a new almost entirely direct style address. Uh, we have to use two bits of zeros on the bottom and the top four bits of the current program counter on the top, but it's pretty close. Uh, and that's, this gives us um, a new address that way. But branches are different. Branches are different because they're relative to the program counter and because they are conditional. And so conditional means you're not always loading a new value into the program counter. Sometimes the program counter just keeps its current value. Uh, but that happens if the branch fails. If the branch succeeds, uh, then the program counter gets a new value. And this is why we call it a branch, right? Because basically your, your program flow is trucking along, and then you have two possibilities. You can either do this or do that. So that's sort of a branch, right? If a thing is true, then you do this. Otherwise, you skip it and do this instead. So we're going to talk in some detail about how branches work. We have two variants, uh, branch if equal and branch if not equal. And uh, as I said in the, in, in the video about the, the complete instruction set, we also have a few uh, conditional branches that can be related to zero, which will be fine, and you can use those as well. When it comes to implementing them, they're a little bit more work, but in general, they, are, they still exist. When we look at the, uh, the machine itself, we're mostly just going to look at the equality and inequality branches, uh, because those are a bit simpler to understand in terms of the way that the hardware works. So what these do is they'll compare uh, the two registers, S1 and S2, and if they are equal, then we're going to put a new value into the program counter. That new value is going to be calculated from the existing program counter plus the immediate value that's in the register. So the, the, it's a, there is some complexity here. Uh, and I did, I think I walked through this already. The branch looks like this. If the two instructions are equal, the program counter gets program counter plus four plus the sign extended value of the immediate value shifted left by two. So why program counter plus four? Well, because when, you're, when you are executing an instruction, the next instruction is always going to be program counter plus four because the program counter should already have been incremented by the time you think about whether to take the branch or not. Why is it four? Well, because memory is always 8 bits wide, and instructions are always 32 bits, and so you're always executing an instruction for after the previous instruction. Uh, this is an, an interesting little uh, quirk of assembly language that allows us to actually make an, make an efficiency in terms of the offset that's stored in the immediate value. If our current address is, um, oh, like our program counter is CF04010, say, for example. That's the current value of our program counter. In memory, right, the program counter is always pointing to some value in memory, and it contains a 32-bit address, which specifies one of the four billion possible memory addresses. Um, in practice, MIPSON's computers don't have four billion, uh, four gigabytes of memory, but this is the size of the memory space. So if, for example, this is the current value of the program counter, the next instruction is going to be 0x0cf04014. And the next instruction will be 0x0cf04018. Right? And then the next instruction after that would be uh, c. Right? Because 8 plus 4 is 12, and 12 is c. Uh, so that's how they go. They go 048c, 048c. And if you take this bottom byte and expand it, 0, 4, 8, C. What you notice is that the bottom two bits are always 0. Uh, and this is what we call word align. And this makes sense. If you start with the bottom two bits being 0 and you're only ever adding 4, then the bottom two bits will always be 0. And if the bottom two bits are zero, then we can assume that they always are zero, and we don't have to build that into the encoding. This is why the when we do a jump, 
the program counter can just assume that the bottom two bits are zero and then take the top four bits from the existing program counter. When it comes to branches, what this means is that we don't actually have to add, say we're going to branch down to here. Maybe there's a label, oops, maybe there's a label that tells us to branch down to here. Well, we can branch, when we branch, the program counter has to add some value to get down here, right? Normally, if we weren't taking any efficiencies, we'd have to add, count how many memory locations this is. Maybe this is uh, 24 memory locations. Maybe there's six instructions between here and here, right? 24 memory locations. But because we know that every instruction is four memory locations, and we know that the instructions are always word aligned, we don't actually have to add 24. We can add six instead because we can take that six and shift it that way by two, and that'll get us to the 24 that we need to add to the program counter. Because we still have to add 20, 24 to the program counter, but we don't have to store that number in the instruction. And by storing a slightly smaller number, the number 6, instead of the number 24, we can take an efficiency and allow a wider range of branches to be available. And so this is why when we are executing our, um, our branch, it's program counter plus 4, because we're already pointing at the next instruction, plus sign extended value, because the branches could be positive or negative, of immediate value shifted by 2. Right, start at six, shift it by two to get it to 24, and that's how many actual memory elements we have to um, adapt. Now, why do we care about all of this stuff? Well, because I want you to know not just what the instruction is, but how it actually works, so that uh, you can encode this instruction. And we'll do an encoding of this instruction uh, once we're done looking at all of the details. So this is what the branch instructions look like. They're immediate format. This is the relative branch distance in words, and that's what we just said, we're going to shift it by four to get the number of bytes that we're going to have to add to the program counter, but we're going to store that value in the memory, in the instruction, in words, so that we have a, a larger range of possibilities, right? So we store it in words, store it in instructions. We look at these two registers and compare them, and if they are equal, then we take the branch for a BEQ. If they're not equal, we take the branch for a BNE. And that amount is going to be multiplied by 4. Um, the, sorry, the, the offset is going to be multiplied by 4 to give you the offset, the relative distance from the current program counter plus 4 to the new instruction. And so that's in Word. So here's an example of how that works. Uh, what is the hex encoding of the branch instruction for this particular uh, setup? So here is, we're going to load some address. We're going to set S0 to 0 by adding 0 to 0 and putting that in S0. We're going to set T0 to 10. Uh, these are initializations. Then we're going to load some word from T1 with a 0 offset, as it turns out, into S1. So T1 is some address. We're going to load that value into S1. And then what are we doing? Then we're going to add S1 to 0. So it seems like we're adding up some collection of numbers that's in memory. We're going to add S1 to, to S0. We're going to add 10 to T1. That's going to increment our address by 10. Maybe these are in some array somewhere. And we're going to decrement T0 by 1. So T0 starts at 10. Now it's 9, because we're adding immediate negative 1. And then we're going to check if it's 0. If it's not 0, we're going to go back to L1. So this is another thing that I'm going to expect you to be able to do, is if I give you some code, you should be able to write some pseudocode. So we can say um, t1 equals address, some address, right? Uh, s0 equals 0, t0 equals 10, and then basically this is a while loop, right? Do, because uh, the condition is checked at the, uh, at the end. So we're going to do um, load... Um, S1 with T1, the memory of T1, and then we're going to say S0 equals S0 plus S1, um, T0 minus minus, right? Uh, and then uh, we also need to increment the address, address uh, plus equals 10. So we're going down on the address. You can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. Uh, address plus equals 10, and then, that's the end of the do, while 
uh, while what? While t0 not equal to 0. So that's the code that would give you that assembler language. So just a quick little example, but it's worth knowing uh, that these things you can read and understand at some point. So the question on the page is, what is the encoding for this branch instruction? And this is really important. Right? Because we need to know, if we look at the encoding uh, on the simulator, is this in fact what we expect it to be? Well, let's look at what we've got. So the branch instruction itself is, um, let's move this up. The branch instruction itself is B, N, E into T, or with T0 compared to register 0 to label 1. Well, let's look at our sheet. Uh, where are we here? Branch, if not equal is 000101 and it's an I format instruction. So we have 000101 uh, that is our B and E. And then we also need to encode T0 and 0. Let's look at the order because sometimes it'll change the order. RS and RT for branch instructions, it's RS and RT. So they are in the same orders. So that's fine. And in fact, for the equality, it doesn't really matter. So T0 first, and T0 is register 8. So register 8 is this. T0 is register 8. And then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is uh, register 0. So that's the first 16 bits. Now we need to know what the bottom 16 bits are. And all we have is L1. In isolation, we can't know what the offset is going to be. We have to know it in the context of the code. So here we have the context of the code. And we know that we're going to jump back to L1. So how many instructions are we jumping back? We're jumping back 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So we want negative 4, right? Not quite, because the program counter has already been incremented by 4. So in fact, we want negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. We want negative 5 in here. Well, what's negative 5? Well, 5 is 1, 0, 1, 0, and all zeros. We flip the bits. Oops. We flip the bits. 1s, 0, 1, 0. And then we add 1, all 1s, 0, 1, 1. That's negative 5. And so it needs to be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. That's negative 5. And that's the value that should be stored in the immediate field of that branch instruction. Because that's how many instructions we're going to jump, jump from the current value of our program counter, which has already been incremented by the next instruction. Because we're counting instructions, it's a little bit easy. So we just count from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, back, so that the program counter can be uh, changed by 5. will get us back to the beginning of our loop, and we can do the loop again and again and again. So that's the encoding. What does it look like? Again, we're going to break this now into 4s. And so this is uh, number 1. This is uh, 5. So this is our hex encoding, 1, 5, 0. Zero. Now, one, 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 one is F, 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 and one, O, oh, one, one is B, right there. That is going to be the hex encoding for the branch instruction that will take you backwards five, uh, five instructions. It's always relative with branches. Branches are relative and they're conditional.